closing the hand along with the early phase, the late phase, the muscle activity, and some key concepts to understand. Okay, so two key concepts I think are important is one, is that maximum grip strength occurs between neutral and 30 degrees of wrist extension. And so if I go from my hand being completely open to closed, I go from a little bit of wrist flexion, and that's to optimize extensor digitorum for wrist extension, but then when I go to wrist flexion, I go into extension of the wrist. And a big part of that, like the reason why, is because this is when my grip is strongest in somewhere between zero to 30 degrees of extension. And so that's part of the reason why we go into this position when making a fist or grasping objects, is because that's where we're strongest. Another important conce concept is lumbricals, proximal and distal attachments, migrate away from each other. This produces passive tension, which contributes to MCP flexion torque. So this is kind of a nitty gritty detail that um, will make sense later on in the video, but pretty much um, the lumbricals attachments are on the extensor mechanism on the back of the hand and flexor digitorum profundus tendon. And when you close your hand, the extensor mechanism is gonna move away or, or move distal and then you're also using flexor digitorum profundus and that's contracting. And so on both ends, lumbrical is being stretched this way and this way. And when it does that, it is um, helping contribute to the total amount of torque um, of closing the hand. Okay, so for the most part, these are the muscles that are gonna be driving the whole thing is flexor digitorum superficialis which comes and inserts on the middle phalanx and flexor digitorum profundus, which goes on the distal phalanx. And so those are just going to flex. They want to flex everything. So in order to focus their flexion power on the, the PIP and the DIP joints, because as you can see, those move the most, um, that we have to add in some extra muscles in order to make it so that they don't flex the wrist and then flex all the fingers. So that's flexor digitorum superficialis and flexor digitorum profundus. These guys are the big bad, the big bad dogs. <laughs> they're gonna, they're the strongest muscles and the most active ones for throughout the whole early phase and late phase. And so then these other muscles we add in to supplement these two muscles. So we have extensor digitorum, which is helping counteract the flexion torque at the MCP joint. And it also is cl clumped in with extensor carpi radialis brevis because both of these do wrist extension. And that's why we go from wrist flexion to wrist extension when we rapidly close our hand. And then we also have the inner side muscles, which are gonna help with MCP flexion. And then I drew lumbricals in black because they're not active throughout the early and late phase, but that passive tension that we talked about, they are going to contribute to MCP flexion passively. And so let's get started on the phases. So in this early phase, Flexor digitorum superficialis and flexor digitorum profundus. So flexor digitorum superficialis and flexor digitorum profundus produce flexion flexion and that's going to be primarily at the PIP DIPs and DIPs here and here. So then we also have all this other muscle activity. So extensor digitorum. So extensor digitorum limits the amount of flexion 
at the M C piece. So extensor digitorum attaches on the extensor mechanism and it's contracting a little bit, partly because at the MCP joint, it wants to limit how much flexion happens here from the main drivers of flexor digitorum superficialis and profundus. And extensor digitorum is also in this next part of the early phase. So extensor digitorum and um, other muscles, other wrist extensors like extensor carpi radialis brevis, they are turned on um, to go to start initiating that wrist extension. So extensor digitorum and extensor carpi radialis brevis initiate wrist extension. Another way to say that would be that they are limiting flexor digitorum superficialis and flexor digitorum profundus from, from going in to wrist flexion. But either way, they're both turned on. Extensor carpi radialis brevis, extensor digitorum, and probably some other wrist extensors like extensor carpi radialis longus. Th these are turned on so that flexor digitorum superficialis and profundus don't do wrist flexion. And then we also have the interossi. Interossi are producing an MCP flexion torque. Produce MCP flexion. Okay, that's it for the early phase. So pretty much what we have is the main drivers of flexor digitorum superficialis and profundus, and then these other muscles turning on in order to assist with it. So the interossi are helping with a little bit of MCP flexion. Extensor digitorum is counteracting the interossi and um, these two muscles, FDS and FDP, from producing too much MCP flexion so that th these can focus primarily on the PIP and DIP. And then extensor carpi radialis brevis and extensor digitorum and probably extensor carpi radialis longus, they are doing wrist extension to limit the amount of flexion that the wrist goes into or is putting the wrist into further extension because we want that zero to 30 degrees of wrist extension in order to get that maximal grip. So that's the end of the early phase and now we're gonna go into the late phase. All right, so in this late phase, it's gonna be the same muscle activity as before. So same as before, it just keeps going. And if you remember in the extensor mechanism video and in this early phase, this dorsal hood was over the MCP joint and now it's migrated distally. So now it's shifted this way and that's because when you close your hand, it's gonna pull down on the extensor mechanism. So the dorsal hood, so dorsal hood shifts distally. And because of this, and what we talked about early on in the beginning is that the lumbricals now, in the early phase, they didn't really do anything. They were just kind of there. But now in this late phase, this extensor mechanism shifts distally. And because of lumbricals distal attachment, they're being stretched on this end. And then because of their proximal attachment, when flexor digitorum profundus contracts, 
they're being stretched proximally. So they're just being stretched from both directions. So lumbricals are being stretched They're being stretched both distally and proximally, which is producing, producing an MCP flexion torque. So that's pretty much it. So everything is all the same muscle activity um, flexor digitorum superficialis profundus are driving the whole thing. Extensor carpi radialis brevis and extensor digitorum are limiting it by doing wrist extension and by limiting the amount of MCP flexion. Um, and they're keeping this in optimal zero to 30 degrees of wrist extension. So you get the maximum amount of grip strength and now the interosse are helping with MCP flexion actively. And then the lumbricals aren't turned on. They aren't on at all. There's no muscle activity. And so, however, they are being stretched both at the distal attachment and at the proximal attachment. So in this dorsal hood moves a few, several millimeters, then it really stretches out the, the lumbricals. And because the lumbricals are on the anterior side of this axis, they're going to assist the interossi in MCP flexion. So just to recap this whole thing for closing the hand, um, some key concepts that are important to know is that maximum grip strength occurs between neutral wrist and 30 degrees of wrist extension. And so that's why we go there when we close our hand. And then the lumbricals proximal and distal attachment, um, proximal attachment on flexor digitorum profundus tendon. As this contracts, it's going to yank the lumbricals this way. And then as you um, fully close your hand, the extensor mechanism is going to shift away. And so lumbricals are being stretched on both ends. And because this stretch is occurring on this side of the axis, it's going to assist with MCP flexion. So those are the two big takeaways um, or two concepts to help clear it all up about why it's set up this way. And then for this early phase, just to sum, sum it up, is flexor digitorum superficialis, flexor digitorum profundus are the main drivers of this whole thing. They're the most active. Extensor digitorum counteracts MCP flexion torque extensor carpi radialis brevis and extensor digitorum are producing a wrist extension torque to help get us into this 30 degrees of extension for maximum grip strength. At the same time, we have the inner ossi, which assist a little bit with MCP flexion, and then the lumbricals aren't really doing anything. And then we get to the late phase. All that same stuff is still happening. Extensor digitorum is counteracting MCP flexion, so it doesn't mostly just so so flexor digitorum superficialis and flexor digitorum profundus don't just flex everything as much as they possibly can and it helps flexor digitorum superficialis and flexor digitorum profundus focus their flexion at the pip and dip joints um, and then we also have the inner ossi which are still doing the same thing and now in this late phase is when the lumbricals are actually doing that passive tension. They don't really do it in the early phase, but then in the late phase when the dorsal hood migrates distally, now the lumbricals are being stretched and they can assist with this flexion. Another big picture takeaway that I want you guys to see is that in this early phase, the main joints that are moving are this PIP joint and this DIP joint. And so that's where the motion primarily occurs here. And then the big two joints that are moving here are at wrist extension and then MCP flexion.
So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. And one other video that you should check out is the sensor mechanism, if this didn't make sense, or opening the hand. Have a great day.